I often hear this myth that slot machines are completely random, so it doesn't matter at all which one you play. But did you know that slot machines are set to pay back a certain percentage of the money that they bring in? Some machines are set as low as like 85%, and some are set as high as like 98%. And this is the money that they'll average paying over the life of the machine. But the question is then, if the payback percentage is over such a long period of time, does it really matter to you, the player? And most people's first instinct with this is they'd want to seek out the absolute best payback percentage that they could possibly find. But it seems like recently, this has gotten to be kind of a controversial topic. And some people want to chase the absolute best payback percentage they could possibly find, while other people say it's only a long-term aggregate, so it doesn't really matter to you, the player, in the short term. As usual, the truth lies somewhere in the middle. And this is episode eight of my series of everything about slot machines. And if you guys like these slot machine videos, be sure to hit the like button, and please consider subscribing. Before we can talk about whether RTP matters, we have to understand what exactly the payback percentage even is. The short answer is that it's the odds of the slot machine, or really any game in the casino. The technical term is it's the expected value of any given spin. Let's say the machine has the expected value set so that for every dollar that you put in, you're gonna get 90 cents back out. That would be 90 cents return to the player or RTP. People often get confused about this and think if the machine has some goal that it's trying to hit, it can't be random and it's gonna have to manipulate itself to hit that goal. We aren't gonna get too deep into that right now. I have a bunch of videos explaining it. And actually the next video in the series I'm really excited about, I promise is the absolute best and simplest explanation you will ever see on how this works. But the general concept is that the machine has the odds for anything that's possible on the slot machine. This is just calculated by how many of each symbol there are on the reels. And if you do the math, you can calculate there might be a 5% chance of winning a dollar, 3% chance of winning $2, 4% chance of winning $5, and maybe a 79% chance of winning nothing at all. You add all those percentages up, do a little bit of math, and you get the payback percentage. How a game designer changes the odds is by changing the symbols that are on the reels. Maybe swap one symbol for a different one, or if they wanna increase the payback percentage, they might delete a couple of the blank spaces. Or if they wanna do the opposite of that, they might wanna decrease the payback percentage, they might add some blank spaces back into the reels. This is done when the games are designed, and then a slot technician will set the game to that percentage. After that, it's all just completely random. This is all really similar to how the casino changes the game of roulette to change the player's payback percentage. Single zero roulette has a payback percentage of 97.3%. If they wanna lower that, they can add another zero to the wheel and you get double zero roulette. That has odds of 94.7%. And then they can do it again, add one more zero to the wheel, make it triple zero roulette, that has odds of 92.3%. The math of adding the zeros to the roulette wheel is exactly like the math of adding blank spaces to the slot machine reels. It might seem more complicated on a slot machine, but it's the exact same concept. But changing a couple symbols on the slot machine reel isn't gonna have an immediate impact to the player and you're probably never gonna notice it. You wouldn't notice if a couple triple bars were changed to single bars or if a couple blank spaces were added into the reels. But to the casino on the other hand, those small changes can make enormous differences in the long term. But since it's only over the very long term, does it really matter to you, the player? I've been seeing lots of comments from people saying that you're only gonna play the machine for a couple hundred spins and the difference will only be noticeable over a few million spins you will never notice a difference because you can win on either one or you can lose on either one. There's a lot to break down with that and parts of that are true and parts of that are completely false. It's absolutely true that you could win on either one, whether it's set to 85% or 98%, but those percentages are enough apart that you could probably make a pretty accurate prediction of which is which after maybe a few hundred spins or so. Not because you were profitable on one, not the other, but you'd probably notice small differences on how many times you won the tiny small wins. The bigger problem with that statement though is saying that the return to player 
is only the long-term odds. That's kind of showing that you don't really understand what we're talking about here. It's true that the results of the machine will converge over the long term, but the odds are the odds. It's equivalent to saying, yeah, triple zero roulette has worse odds than single zero, but that's only over the long term. If you're playing triple zero roulette versus single zero roulette, the odds are worse on this spin, the next spin, the one after that. It doesn't matter if you win on either one, the odds are worse every single spin on triple zero roulette. It's true that you could win a ton of money on triple zero roulette in the short term. That could totally happen, but the odds were never at any point better or equal to on triple zero roulette versus single zero roulette. I think a lot of people think that's completely different because you can see what's happening, whether you land on red, black, or green or whatever. But the thing is, if you couldn't see what's happening, it would feel pretty much exactly like a slot machine. You know, you bet and the dealer says, you lost, you lost, you won. You would have no idea if you lost because you landed on red 21 or if it was because you landed on green double zero. Single zero and triple zero roulette would feel pretty much exactly the same if you couldn't see what's going on. But given the choice, I would prefer to have less zeros on the wheel every single time. At no point would I ever walk up to two tables and pick the triple zero roulette and say, you know, the odds don't really matter in the short term, so I'm not gonna pick the one with the better odds. It's exactly the same on the slot machine. If I had two hypothetical slot machines, one with 48 blank spaces on real one and another with 56 blank spaces on real one, if I were given the choice and I knew which was which, I would choose the one with fewer blank spaces every single time. So given the choice between two equivalent slot machines, one set at 98% and one set at 85%, I would choose the better RTP every single time without question. But that brings us back around to where that statement was actually true. People put way too much emphasis on return to player because you're never gonna have the choice between two slot machines in the same casino, in the same denomination that are 85% and 98%. Two slot machines in the same casino with the same denomination might be 90.2% and 90.4%. That's not enough of a difference to worry about. It's also a moot point because you're never gonna know which one is 90.2 and which one is 90.4. You can't tell by looking at them. Nobody that works there is gonna tell you which is which, and those are so close together that you would never figure it out by playing them. What you might be able to find is some information like the Las Vegas locals casinos have their penny machines set to 90% on average, and the strip casinos have their penny machines set to 88% on average. Again, that's not really that big of a difference, and I personally don't think it's worth spending a bunch of time chasing, but maybe you do. That's a decision for yourself. So first you wanna focus on your money management strategy and your budget. Then you wanna worry about picking a machine with the right amount of volatility. And then after those things, maybe you might wanna do some tricks to find a higher payback percentage. I'll do things like, because a higher denomination machine typically has a higher RTP, I'll look for a dollar machine that I can play on one or two credits instead of a penny machine on several hundred credits. That fits my money management strategy, gets me the volatility of the machine that I'm looking for, and also gets me a few extra percentage points on the RTP. Another thing to keep in mind is remember that no matter how good the payback percentage is, whether it's 85 or it is 98%, Either way, that's less than 100%. Even if the payback percentage was like 99.9%, .9%, that's a negative expected value and you'll lose money on the machine over time. Either way, your bankroll will eventually go to zero. What a higher payback percentage really means is that on average, your bankroll might last a couple extra spins. So in the end, if you think you'll notice if your bankroll lasts 600 spins versus 610 spins, maybe RTP does matter to you. Otherwise, I'd say probably don't worry about it that much. But you probably do wanna have a better understanding of what RTP really means, which is why you're definitely gonna to wanna to watch the next video in the series, number nine. It explains RTP better than anything I've ever seen. If you watch that video, all this RTP stuff is gonna make complete sense to you. Let me know if RTP is something that you guys pay attention to. Don't forget to hit the like button. Please consider subscribing. For your next Vegas trip, get educated. Thanks for watching.